Hello and what is going on everyone, it's Duoscape here and today I have another great AFK money making method for you guys to do on your account when you don't really have the time to play. If you love AFK and mobs such as Viawatches, Abbey Demons, Capsarius and Spiritual Mages then you'll absolutely love this one. The following method that I'm going to show you will be able to consistently make you around 11 million GP an hour AFK. Alongside this you'll also be able to grab yourself a ton of elite and hard clues for all of you clue lovers out there. Before we continue on with the video, I want to give a huge shout out to everyone that subscribed to the channel. We've just hit over 3,000 subscribers and honestly, I can't even put into words how grateful I am for you guys to join along on the journey and build this community together with me. That being said, 76% of you guys aren't actually subscribed to the channel. So if you find that you keep watching my videos, you're enjoying the content and finding the guides useful, please subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on any of my future uploads that I've got coming for you in the future. There's going to be a ton of money making guides coming, a ton of useful tips and tricks to get into PVM and we have series on the go constantly so if that's something that sounds interesting to you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on any of our future content. Right so let's jump into the requirements and recommendations for this method. You're going to want to make sure that your attack, strength and defense are all at least level 90. This method will also help finish them off and get these stats to level 99 if you haven't got them already. I'm sure many of you guys haven't been living under a rock and if you need to level up these fast, go do Elite Dungeon free with a few of your friends and do some trash runs. It's a great way to make some early money on your account and to get your stats up to scratch to do other methods in the game. I'd also recommend that you have unlocked Overloads and Soul Split to sustain yourself, help you survive and increase your profits an hour. Having level 95 prayer will also help you a ton and increase the amount of kills an hour that you're able to get as it will enable you to unlock the turmoil curse. And finally, to do this method you have to have unlocked Priftiness. So the Plague's End quest must be completed. This may seem daunting to some of you newer players out there, especially if you don't like quests. But trust me, this should be one of your primary objectives when getting into the game. And for those of you coming over from old school, this is like the RuneScape 3 equivalent of getting your Barrow's Gloves and completing Recipe for Disaster. So it's definitely a goal that you want to have on your account if you haven't done so already. Now that we've covered the requirements, we can take a look at the gear setup and loadout that I'd recommend using for this method. I personally opt to do this in hour trips, so I'll bring two Holy Aggro Overloads and this will last me for the full hour. No worries if you don't have these unlocked, you can simply just bring their counterparts instead. As long as you bring enough overloads, super prayer renewals and aggression potions to last you a full hour, you should be fine. Another great item to have which will increase the AFK ability of this method is Potion Reservoirs. This is an item that you can make using Invention and what it does is it makes it so that it automatically drinks whatever potion you have stored in it. So if you have Holy Aggro Overloads and you put these in your Potion Reservoirs and activate it, they will continuously drink your overload as it runs out and enable you to stay in combat and get the maximum amount of kills an hour consistently. So this is definitely an item I'd recommend to anyone out there that likes AFK and any Slayer mobs or mobs in the game in general. As these are susceptible to poison damage, you want to make sure you bring in weapon poison plus plus plus. This is well worth using and will increase your kills an hour and will pay for itself in the long run. So you definitely want to make sure you bring this. Standard stuff for any Slayer task or mob that you're farming. If you have it, make sure you bring your Enhanced Excalibur and Ancient Elven Ritual Shard. You'll never actually use the Excalibur, but if you're anything like me, you just bring it everywhere you go, so that's why it's with us. I'm going to suggest two methods later on on how to do this. One of them will be using a Penance Aura, and one of them will be using a Vampirism Aura. If you opt to use a Vampirism Aura, you will need Super Restores, and you're going to need about eight of them to last you a full hour. As these drop a ton of Rune Salvage, you're going to want to make sure you have a Spring Cleaner as well. Now let's take a look at the gear that I'd recommend using. First up, you have a choice of what amulet you'd like to bring. You can bring an amulet of souls that will make it so that your soul split damage heals you more or you can bring yourself a blood necklace which will periodically heal you as you're fighting your opponents. Both of these work fine so use whichever one of the two that you would like to use. In terms of armor I wouldn't recommend anything else other than masterwork armor. I'm sure you'll be able to do this with tier 80 but with how cheap it is to get a set of masterwork you may as well get yourself this. I wouldn't recommend using trim masterwork it will be overkill and it's definitely not needed for this method. And then in terms of the weapon you're going to want to make sure you have a Lanakei your spear. This is going to be the best weapon that you can use here as with the tier 95 prayer and regular overloads you do have a 99% accuracy and for those of you unaware the Lanakei your spear increases your weapon poison damage by 5% and grants an additional 5% to poison targets when using weapon poison. This can stack for some insane poison damage when pairing it with other items such as Cinderbane Gloves and Weapon Poison++, plus plus plus, which overall will increase the amount of kills you can get an hour. Also, if you didn't know, Lanakea's Spear also acts as a Halberg weapon, which is really important for this method so that you can AoE them down as quickly as possible. And then the final two items that you're going to want to make sure you have are Cinderbane Gloves and the Luck of the Dwarves or a Ring of Vigor. If you don't have Cinderbane Gloves, the method will still be possible, but you will make less money an hour because you will be getting less kills an hour. These are great gloves to get for anyone out there that likes doing bossing or slayer alike. 
They're a hybrid set of gloves, so they'll cover you for all three combat styles as well. So it's definitely an item that you want to invest in as soon as you get the money to get it, pretty much. With the gear setup covered, it's important that we take a look at the optimal perks and relics that you should be using when doing this method. For those of you unaware, perks and relics offer crazy utility and damage upgrades to your account across the game, which will boost your profits an insane amount. And a lot of the time, upgrading these is just as important, if not more important than upgrading your gear itself. So let's take a look at the perks that I'd recommend for this setup. On your Lanakaya's Spear, I'd recommend having Precise 6 paired with Genocidal. This will increase the amount of damage that you're able to deal to your opponents by 7.5%. And Genocidal increases the amount of damage that you can deal on a Slayer task, gradually increasing more as the Slayer task goes on. Obviously, if you aren't too into your Slayer and you're specifically just doing this for GP, this won't be the best setup on this. You would want Precise 6 with Aftershock 1. But in all honesty, that would be very overkill for this method, so I'm not going to recommend that. The second set of perks you want on your spear is Equilibrium 4 paired with Ruthless 3. Equilibrium 4 will be a cheap perk that you can obtain. However, if you pair this with Ruthless 3, it will increase the overall amount of damage that you're able to deal an hour by a ton. Equilibrium 4 on its own is a 5.3% damage increase when fighting any enemy in the game, which is great, but you can pair this with Ruthless 3. And when you pair it with Ruthless 3, essentially what happens is every time you kill an enemy, you gain a stack, and this can go up to a maximum of 5 stacks. These stacks will last for 20 seconds, and considering you're going to be killing these extremely quick, you're always going to maintain 5 stacks. So that's going to be a further 7.5% damage boost on your weapon, which when you pair this collectively with Precise 6, Equilibrium, and Ruthless 3, you're going to be getting yourself a 20.3% damage increase while fighting these, so it's definitely worth getting this on your gear. If you cannot afford the steep 20-25 mil that it's going to cost you to get Equilibrium 4 and Ruthless 3, I'd recommend just doing this for a few hours and getting enough money to get it. It's definitely an upgrade that you want to have on your spear and it is best in slot for doing any mob farming or slayer in the game. In terms of your armor, I'd recommend having Relentless 5 and Crackling 4. This will increase the amount of kills that you're able to get an hour and is worth having on any set of armor. Impatient 4 will increase the amount of adrenaline that you're able to attain, allowing you to get to ultimate abilities and threshold abilities even faster. So that's another great perk to have on this setup. And then finally, Biting 4 will be the best in slot. However, don't worry if you don't have this. I'm personally using Biting 2 paired with Venom Blood for this method, and it's working absolutely fine. Just know that if you get Biting 4, you will be doing more damage in the form of critical hits, so you will get more kills an hour. And finally, I have Enhanced Devoted 4. However, don't worry, that's not used for this method at all. It's just a nice baseline perk to have on your gear for other things. Now this isn't a method where your relics actually matter too much. I'm still going to discuss some useful ones that you may want to consider using here. One useful relic that you can use is the Luck of the Dwarves relic. This allows you to free up your ring slot and make it so that you can wear a Ring of Vigor or an Asylum Surgeon's ring. Fury of the Small also works great at anywhere you're using EOC combat as it makes it so that every single one of your basic abilities generates 1% more adrenaline. Similar to Impatient in the sense that it allows you to get to your thresholds and ultimate abilities even faster and therefore will increase the amount of kills that you can obtain an hour. Death Ward's another nice relic but it's not really needed. It will just reduce the overall amount of damage that you are taking here. But as I said it's not necessary for this method, it's just one that you may want to consider. Persistent Rage is a great quality of life relic that enables you to never lose adrenaline when you're out of combat. While this isn't required for this method, it's nice for whenever you need to run to the bank so that when you return back to the elves you can have full adrenaline. And then finally, Berserker's Fury will increase the amount of damage that you're able to deal to these. This relic makes it so that the lower your hit points are, the more damage that you deal, similar to the Darox effect when using the Darox armor set. And this can give you a boost up to 5.5%. However, realistically, you're only probably going to be getting a 1-2% to damage increase by using this. As I said, the relics aren't too important for this method, as they would be at bosses, for example. But these are just some great ones that you can consider using. Some other useful items that you may want to be using here are the Vampirism and Penance Aura. When we get into the method, I'll show you all of the different ways that you can opt to kill these to sustain yourself. But these are two great choices. And if you use the Vampirism Aura, it will lower the amount of cost that you have an hour, as you won't need to use a Vampirism Scrimshaw. Another useful unlock, if you have it, is the Corbicular Rex perk from Ranch Out of Time. And this will make it so that when you use your Meteor Strike, you're a lot more likely to deal a critical hit, which will overall give you a lot more adrenaline. However, this is definitely not necessary, and it will be very overkill. Just know that if you have this, you will get slightly more kills an hour. So let's actually jump into the method now. 
Here is the inventory layout that I actually use when camping these. I have all of the notable drops that you're going to be collecting, my spring cleaner, the clue scrolls as placeholders. Obviously, you wouldn't normally have 50, but I've been camping this and maxed out all of my clues. So normally you just want one of each as a placeholder. So two last three hours, which is a full vampirism scrimshaw. You want to be using three weapon poison plus 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 flasks, six holy aggro overloads and 24 super restore flasks. You are going to want to bring a yak or a legendary familiar to store all of these and then some other yak pouches to extend your familiar once it's nearly dead. And then you also want all of the placeholder drops so that you can just AFK and you don't miss any of the loot. So don't worry if you ain't consistently looting because most of the drops are alkables. So if you miss loot in here and there, it won't be the end of the world. To begin with, you want to go south of the Priftinus Lodestone, down to the Isleworth district where Moravan is. And I'd recommend turning off Revolution for now, putting your Holy Aggro Overload on and tagging all of the guards and scouts that you can see. There should be six of them in total. Just be aware that sometimes one or two may be stuck outside of this little circle and you will have to run over to them and get them onto you. Thankfully, when you kill these, they actually respawn where you killed them, so you don't have to reload all these after doing it once. I found that standing right here on this spot is the best place to kill these. You should have three scouts and three guards on you at all times. Occasionally, one of them may slip away and not aggro from your aggression potions, but if that happens, simply just run up to him and tag him and bring him back to the spot. On screen now is the Revolution++ plus plus bar that I'd recommend using for this method. And that is it. There's not much to it. You just sit here AFK and looting periodically. If you want to do a long trip like myself, bring a yak and fill it up with prayer flasks and some spare yak pouches. So you have three ways to actually sustain yourself here that I've found. First up, you can use a vampirism aura. With a vampirism aura, a blood amulet or an amulet of souls using the setup that I've shown in this video, you'll be able to completely AFK these with the revolution bar just standing still. This will be the most cost effective method because it doesn't cost you anything to use this. The second setup is the most AFK setup and it will be using a vampirism scrimshaw paired with a penance aura. If you use this method, you'll fully sustain your health and your prayer points so you don't actually need to do anything so this is the most afk method and then finally for those that don't want to be using their aura here you can just use a vampirism scrimshaw on its own you will have to make sure you replenish your prayer points yourself and obviously it will cost you about two mil an hour with the cost of vampirism scrimshaws at the moment but even with it costing two mil an hour you're going to be making about nine mil aside from that so it's still well worth doing and that's pretty much it. There's nothing too special to this method. Once you stack these and lure them, you can literally just stand still and use the revolution bar and it will just make you money. Using this method, I've consistently able to get ourselves 880 kills an hour. Now that we've covered the method, we can actually take a look at the money and drops you can expect to get here using the method. A link to this spreadsheet will be in the comment section down below and can be used to track your profit and drops based on your kills an hour. All you need to do is adjust the kills an hour in the top left and it will show you how much you can expect to make killing these. As I've said, if you're going to be using the method I'm showing you with the same exact gear setup that I have and you do the lure properly, you should be averaging 880 kills an hour and you can expect to make 11.3 million GP an hour with an average loot of 12,905 GP a kill. This is great for Iron Men as well as you can get a ton of coins and useful herbal or supplies for your account. They're also not too bad for clue scrolls. For every hour of doing this method, you can expect 6.9 hard clues and 2.8 elite clues. While it's not being the best method in the game for obtaining clue scrolls, it's still pretty cool considering how much money you can make while completely AFKing on your account doing this method. They also drop a ton of Trist key pieces as well. Unfortunately, I cannot find the drop rate for them on the wiki and I haven't got a big enough sample yet to let you know how many they drop and the consistency that you can expect to receive these but they will add up to even more elites over time. In all honesty, if you're the kind of guy that likes killing Viawatches, Abyssal Demons, Capsarius, Corrupted Scorpions, then there isn't really too much reason you wouldn't try out this method. If loads of people do it, the overall profit an hour isn't going to go down too much, purely due to the fact that half of your money actually comes from alkable items or coins. And if you guys don't believe me in a sense of the amount of kills that you're able to get an hour here, I'd recommend going and testing it out for yourself. I can only go based off the rates that I've been receiving over the last three to four hours. And I am going to be testing this even more in my Stacked From Scratch series if you guys want to go check that out. If you guys found the video useful, then don't forget to smash the like button to let me know. And as always, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. There are so many guides, tutorials, PVMing tips and series to come that you won't want to miss out on. Thank you all for watching and good luck smashing out this method. It really does make a ton of money on your account. And it's great for anyone out there looking to AFK something different.